The ancient land of Israel is a testimony, an evidence, if you will, of the greatness of what God did in that country, a testimony to the truth of the words that we find in the pages of the Bible. The people who lived here have left behind a record, an indelible record, if you will, of their lives. An important part of that record is the cities where they lived, ancient piles of debris that contain their culture, architecture, art, their diet, the weapons they used, and even on occasion, their writings. These piles of ancient cities, often built one on top of the other, are called tells. People in ancient times tended to build and live in the same places, maybe because there were occupations there or a main road went nearby, or maybe most likely of all, a source of fresh water. And as archaeologists began to peel away the layers of this ancient civilization, the culture and even the people of the Bible come to light. I'd like to ask you to join us on this adventure. We're going to try and understand the people, the context of the Bible. It'll mean some extra hiking, some climbing, some travel to out-of-the-way places. But the end result, I think, will be well worth the effort as we discover again that God's Word, God's message, is as relevant for us as it was for them. One of the greatest of the tells is Tel Gezer. This huge mound of ancient remains stands along the great road of the world, the world of the Bible, that connected the empires of Mesopotamia and Egypt. It stands, if you will, as a standing stone along the ancient crossroads of human civilization. Welcome to Tel Gezer. I just had a chance to walk up the side of the tell so you get an idea of the size of this huge tell. It's one of the largest uh, three tells in the country of Israel. And you can see by the height of the hill we're on, even apart from the artificial debris under our feet, that this is a defensible location. It's a place where you could keep the enemies out. So people settled here, maybe as long as 3,000 years before the Common Era, 3,000 years before Jesus. They began living here already in the early Bronze Age. You're sitting on that. If you just stop and think about that for a moment, that means you're sitting on 40, 50, 60 feet of the life of people for the last 5,000 years. And that's all under your feet. Somewhere down under your feet, you have the conditions that were here when Solomon was king, when Abraham walked through this area, when uh, Jesus was here, and 500 years ago, let's say, during a Turkish or an Arab period. All of that is right here under your feet. The second background thing I'd like to go into is more geography. I'd like to talk a little bit about where we are and why Tel Gezer is here and why it's so big. If you look back to the west here, behind where we are, in that direction over there, you'll see the coastal plain. Coastal plain is that band of area along the Mediterranean Sea coast, 10, 12, 15 miles wide, fairly flat, very fertile. Just over in this direction, out here to the east, you see the very beginning of the foothills, the Shefela, out in the distance. You can just see that line of hills. Beyond it, oh, only about eight miles, start the hills or the mountains of Judea. And we're only 15 miles here from Jerusalem, Jerusalem being at the highest point at the top, at the plateau or whatever, of the hills of Judea. And then you start down the backside, down to the Rift Valley, to the Dead Sea, to the Jordan River. So we're standing right where those hills begin. But what makes this location so significant has to do with the countries around here. If we were to go off in that direction, toward the southwest, we would come before very long to the country of Egypt. It was a major civilization in biblical times. It was the world power. It was technologically advanced, was culturally advanced, maybe somewhat similar to what the Western world is today, maybe somewhat along the lines of the United States even. To our east were the Oriental civilizations in what we call Mesopotamia. Uh, had different names called Persia, called Babylon, called Assyria. Now those two world empires needed each other for economic and cultural reasons. And you have to imagine, down there below you on the coastal plain, 
was the life artery, the blood artery, if you will, of two civilizations that were connected right here. And if you could control this little location where the road went between the swamps and the mountains, you could, in effect, control world trade. If you controlled world trade, you could control the world. And so a city like this represented much more than just a big city or an economic base or a place where people lived. A city like this represented where the world could be controlled because you could control the trade that went on internationally.